What happens when the unstoppable force meets an immovable object? You have a matchup like this. Providence and Quinnipiac women's ice hockey in this weekend's preview for Q30 Sports. Let's break it all down. I'm Clever Streich, and I'll take you first through the tale of the tape. The Bobcats coming into this weekend 16-1, and one, an amazing start for their year. Providence at 15-4-1. and one. They come in ranked number 10-9 in the country. The Bobcats sitting at number 3 right now, which is impressive ranking for them, the highest they've had since 2015. The leading scorer of the Friars is Sarah Jalmerson. She has 13 goals, 12 assists, 25 points. She's been hot as of late with eight goals in the last couple of games. Olivia Mobley leading the way for the Bobcats with 26 points so far in the season. She's had a great junior year. Next up, let's take a look back. We'll turn back the clock here. The last time that the Bobcats and Friars faced each other, and the reason I started this package off by saying the unstoppable force meeting the immovable object, they tied in the entire season split. 2-2 on October 15th, 1-1 on October 16th. Both of these games finishing after a five-minute overtime session, and we couldn't get a winner. The last six meetings between these two programs have been one-goal games or tie games. This is going to be a series of inches. Providence leading the all-time series lead 9-2. Here's a player to watch for both sides. First up, the Bobcats. Maya Labad. Let's talk about her. Maya Labad, the MVP of the Nutmeg Classic. She was fantastic in the last couple of games. She had two goals against Union this past weekend in league play. She has 11 goals, 6 assists, and 17 points on the year with a plus 16. And for the Friars, the goaltender, Sandra Abstrader, the graduate is 15-4-1. She's played every single game so far for the perennial Hockey East favorite with a goals against average of 1.40, a save percent, excuse me, of 942 and six shutouts on the season. She is going to be the X factor for the Providence Friars. And the last two times that she's faced the Bobcats were those ties. So we'll see who can come out on top and what is one of the biggest weekends in Quinnipiac women's ice hockey this year before taking a break and then taking on Wisconsin down the line. This has been your weekend preview for Q3 Sports. I'm Clever Streich. In NCAA women's ice hockey, good teams can be tested, but only the great ones prevail. Last night in Rhode Island, the number three Quinnipiac Bobcats were pushed to the brink against the number 10-9 Providence Friars, but battled back from a 2-1 deficit to defeat the Friars for the first time since 2019. But the black and white team from Schneider Arena has one more opportunity to take down one of the top teams in the country in today's matinee from M&T Bank Arena. Can Quinnipiac expand their win streak to nine games and go 18-1 and one into winter break? Or will Providence be the roadblock en route to a weekend with number two Wisconsin at the top of 2023? It's Quinnipiac women's ice hockey, the number three Bobcats versus the number 10-9 Providence Friars, live on the Quinnipiac Bobcats Sports Network. Hi everybody, I'm Clever Streich, along with Ben Rickovicious, high above the M&T Bank Arena inside the Frank Prodi Jr. Arena here in Hamden, Connecticut for what should be a spectacular matchup between two teams that are so evenly matched, Ben. Labad cuts towards the net, sends it on the pad of Sandra Abstrader. The puck's still loose. The Bobcats can't recover it, however. Good saves by Abstrader as the puck's thrown to the right of her cage. On the near side now, Riley over to Nina Steigoff. Steigoff trying to center for Sophie Urban. Wraps it around, back up to the point for Shriver. No offsides is called as she's up on the far wall now near the Adidas logo, but Providence is able to skate it back out. Yeah, Sandra Abstrader wears the alternate captaincy, so she's a leader both on and off the ice as one of the longest tenured members of this Providence roster. She's been here since the 2017-18 season. COVID rules have allowed her to play up until the 22-23 season. Now Shantler in the second line going to work again. Shantler dekes around two players. Mobley still has it. It's loose. They score! Kendall Cooper on the left side of the net gets the Bobcats up 1-0. And Mobley did a great job of setting up Cooper right there for the score. Kendall Cooper's third goal of the year. That was a play initiated by Shantler, who passed to Mobley on the right side of the cage. And down low was Kendall Cooper waiting there to jam the puck home. Quinnipiac has the opening goal with 13-13 to play in the first period. That's a big goal for Quinnipiac. Providence scored first yesterday, and the Bobcats had to catch up the whole time. But this time, shoes on the other foot. Labad takes the puck away to Steigoff. She scores! Nita Steigoff from the right side of the crease. 
After all, a bad turnover, and the Bobcats have a 2-0 lead. Yeah, that was a fantastic pass there, and even more impressive shot there. We were just talking about offensive drivers being Olivia Mobley as an example. Let's talk Maya Labad. She turns the puck over, gets it to Nina Steigoff down low, and two straight goals have been scored in the last four minutes against Abstrader. The Bobcats have taken this game with a quick start. Exactly what you want to see if you're Cass Turner. 9.27 left to go in the first period. Quinnipiac up 2-0, out shooting the Providence Friars 7-1. Goals yeah. from Kendall Cooper and Nina Steigoff. And when we get back the shot report at the end of this period, every period we get a printout of all the shots and the locations that they're taking on the ice, you will see a lot from the net mouth. Yes. Quinnipiac is driving towards the slot. They're driving towards the net mouth. That's exactly what they need to do to get around a great goaltender like Sandra Abstrader. Peart for the Bobcats by the blue line. Providence with the puck now. A shot taken, and they score! Providence gets their first goal of the game, cutting the lead in half. Quinnipiac had controlled pretty much everything up to this point, but Rachel Weiss emerging on the far right side ends up getting the first goal of the contest for Providence. Rachel Weiss had a goal against Mary Mack in the Providence Friars' previous series. 35 points in 84 games played in her time over in Happy Valley in Penn State. She was also a gold medalist with Team Canada U18 in the World Championships in 2019, so a pretty impressive resume on Rachel Weiss there. It'll be interesting to see if they can continue to pressure her and draw some better looks. Yeah, it feels like Providence is really starting to get their groove in this game. They've looked a lot better, even if the shots on goal don't tell the story. They are a lot better adjusted in this frame compared to the first, where they were pretty much dominated by Quinnipiac. Now skating up with it is Sadie Peart. Peart to pass over to Labad, fires, the rebound still loose, and Abstrader covers it. Great chances by the top line of the Bobcats as Sadie Peart cut towards the slot again. The puck slips through to Mobley there. She enters the zone. Turn back over to Yalmerson. If they hurry, they can create an on-man rush. Here's Noy Barova in the slot, and they score! Out of simply nowhere, ties the game. And I mean, hey, that's 22 to seven shot on goal category still looks alarming, but you look at the scoreboard and it doesn't quite reflect it. It's a whole new ice hockey game. Quinnipiac dropping a two goal lead here. And yeah, it does not matter how many shots Quinnipiac takes. If you can't finish, you can't finish. And Providence is certainly finishing on Logan Andres right now. Andres has struggled historically against this team, but Andres has been consistently good this year. A 945 save percentage and a 1.0 goals against average. He was a part of a massive shutout streak Quinnipiac had a few games back where they did not allow goals in four straight games. But today, the Bobcats led up multiple goals for the first time since facing St. Lawrence a few weekends back in league play. She plays it up into the neutral zone. 3.30 remaining in the second period. There's Yalmerson in the slot. Save, rebound, it's off the post. Providence creates another great chance, and this time it's Caroline Peterson that could not find pay dirt. Hey, Abstrader's a goaltender that has played for Team Germany in the 2022 IIHF World Championships. She's been in big game situations where she has to lock it down. Speaking of situations, here's Yalmerson with a two-on-one. Big save made by Andres, who just denies the Nobarova chance. That was an incredible stop as Andres laid out. Oh, man. That was the save of the game right there for Logan Andres. She has not seen a lot of shots, but she just made a fantastic stop. This one's sure to be a fight to the finish. It's a tied game. Quinnipiac scored two in the first period. Providence scored two in the second period. Let's see who comes out on top. Stick with us here on QBSN. But a bad turnover to Bachna. Bachna shooting save, point blank by Andres with the stick. Big chance there for Providence, but they can't get that one to go. But the Bobcats enter the zone. Sadie Peart on the near side, trying to get to Labad. Shot, save made by Abstrader with the left pad. Incredible stop by Sandra Abstrader, who stonewalls Sadie Peart in the first line. But Riley keeps it in the zone. Riley to Labad. Labad can't set her. She was just on the opposite side. Labad tried to turn around there. She nearly had a one-timer opportunity. Cooper flings the puck all the way from the point. And now it's loose again over to Riley. Riley to Labad in the high slot. Labad shoots. Blocker save made by Abstrader. Labad collects the rebound to Steigoff out in front. She can't get a shot off. 
Yalmerson a shot. Andre's out of position. She has to regain her composure there. Yalmerson, another shot blocked out in front by Sam Eskevich. Trying to bring it out of the zones, Quinnipiac. Chantler kicks it along, and a great play by the Bobcats to shut down Providence. But Providence is not done. Here's Neubarova. Neubarova firing, and it goes off of Borster's stick. The rebound! They score! Noyemi Neubarova collects her own rebound after it went off the glass, and Providence has erased a 2-0 Quinnipiac lead. The puck hit off of the boards to the right of Andres. Andres was lying down after making the initial stop, and Neubarova collected and dumped the puck into the back of the net. And now Providence, for the first time in this contest, have a lead. This is the reverse of what happened last night where Quinnipiac battled back from having the 2-1 deficit against them. Now a 2-0 deficit being erased by the Friars, who want a big upset over the number three team in the country. And brought out of the zone now with 34 to play was Tayo again. Samuskevich keeps it in. And now here's a chance for Peart. Peart breaking towards the net. A backhander simply sticked away by Abstrader. 22 seconds left on the clock. Mobley shooting. The rebound can't be controlled by Maloney. Riley from the point. Fires. Glove save made by Abstrader. 10 seconds left on the clock. Quinnipiac trying for one final chance. Five on the clock. Providence pins it against the boards. And four seconds to go. There's a whistle. Quinnipiac loses the draw. Labat has it, though. Two seconds. Trying to center were the Bobcats. And that will do it. Number 10-9 Providence takes down number three Quinnipiac, 3-2, coming back from a 2-0 deficit to upset the Bobcats, delivering only their second regulation loss of the season. The number three Quinnipiac women's ice hockey team welcomed the number 10-9 Providence Friars to Hamden on Saturday afternoon. Quinnipiac looking to increase its win streak to nine after a victory over Providence yesterday in Rhode Island. Let's head to the first period of action. Quinnipiac gets out to a fast start. Madison Chantler initiates a tick, tack, toe play to Kendall Cooper, who provides the finish to give Quinnipiac the one nothing start. Just a few minutes later, Maya Labad strips a fryer off the puck and weaves through traffic and finds Nina Steigoff who cashes in near side to give Quinnipiac a two-goal lead heading into intermission. Despite the Bobcats' strong start, the tides would turn in the second for Providence. Caroline Peterson enters the zone, drops the puck off to Rachel Weiss, who finds the back of the net and beats Logan Andres to get her team on the board and cut the Quinnipiac lead to one. Later on, Friars on the rush again. Sarah Yalmerson sends the puck past blocker side of Logan Andres. She ties the game, erasing the deficit. It's 2-2. In the closing minutes, Providence tries to get the lead, but Logan Andres with two fantastic saves to keep the contest all knotted up. Moving on to the third frame, Noemi Noborova sends a wrister off the glass and collects her own rebound to give the go-ahead goal for the Friars. They lead 3-2, and that would seal the deal. Quinnipiac cannot come back as they fall to Providence 3-2 in Hamden.